Hello guys and welcome back to the show. For the past few months, I've been working a lot with Kafka, Elasticsearch and FS2 Streams. So I've decided to work on a project that will allow me to use all these three technologies to build a backend service. Then I'll have a React application that will connect with this backend service and then interact with it. In this project, we are going to use Scala for the backend and then React for the frontend. So what the backend service is going to do is that it will receive a request the request will be published into a Kafka topic and then we will have a consumer which will consume from the Kafka topic and then index it or store it into an Elasticsearch index. Let's get started and let's see how we can build the backend for this project. So to get started, the first thing I'm going to do is to create a build.sbt file. So I'll do touch build.sbt, okay, so I have my build to SVT file created. So what I'm going to do is to set the Scala version that I would like to use for this project. So what I'll do is to type in SBT like so. What this just did is that it created a project directory and also a target directory for me. The next thing I'm going to do is to set the Scala version. Okay, so we can do that by either opening the built of SBT file inside of IntelliJ and then explicitly set in the Scala version or we can do it through um, SBT. So instead of SBT, I can do, I can say set this build. I can say Scala version and I want to use Scala version uh, 2.13. Okay, so I can say this. Okay, so I have this and then I'll hit enter. Okay, so if I do Scala version now, I have 2.216. Okay, so I'll do session and then save to actually apply this. So now if I go into my build.sbt and I do cut build.sbt, you should see that we have the Scala version in there. Now, I'll open this inside of IntelliJ. IntelliJ is the IDE that I use when working with Scala. You can also use Visual Studio Code if you want, but to use Visual Studio Code, you have to install a plugin called Metal, which will enable you to use Visual Studio Code with Scala comfortably. So as you can see, um, this is failing because I made a mistake with the Scala version. This has to be 2.13 and then 0.6, okay? So now let me build it again and hopefully it should work correctly. Now that the Scala version has been corrected, what I'm going to do next is to create the model which will contain my code, okay? So what I'll do is that inside of the mini app, so from the root of the application, what I'm going to do is to create a directory. This directory can be any name. What I'm going to call this is event store, okay? So I'm going to say mkdir event, and I'll say store, like so, okay? So I now have an event store directory in here. So the next thing I'll do is to create a variable. I'll call this event store. Then I'll say that project in file, and then this name will basically be the path to this directory. So I will say dot here, and then it will be this name. So I can come over here and even do a copy and then paste this over here, okay? So I'm saying that the project will be in this directory. Then I'll say dot settings, um, I'll give it a module name, and I'll call the module event store, okay? I'll assign this to event store, like so. And then the next thing will basically be the libraries that I will need to provide for this model. So I can say dot settings and I can specify the library dependencies. For now, I'll leave it as an empty sequence, okay? So I'll have an empty sequence over here, all right? Then I will try and build this. The next thing I'm going to do is to add a Scala filmed configuration. Scala Filmed is basically for code formatting and I usually add it to all my SBT projects. So inside of the terminal, 
I'll say touch dot .scalafirmed.conf like so and then I'll add these configurations to it okay if you go on to Scalafirmed you check the docs and you check the configuration there are a lot of configurations that you could use um, I have chosen the configurations that I want you can decide to use the configuration that I'm using or you can decide to use the configurations that you want that is perfectly fine too now that this has been completed what I'm going to do is that inside of the event store directory, I'm going to create a source directory. So I'll call over here, now directory, I'll say source, so S, R, and C, okay? And inside of the source directory, what I'm going to do is to create a main directory. So I'll say new directory, and I'll have a main directory. And inside of the main directory, I'll have a Scala directory, like so. So I'll say Scala, okay? And then I will basically create a package and I will say com directory. Inside of the com directory, I'll have the show as another package. And then inside of the, the show directory, I'll have the last directory, which is basically called call, like so. The next thing I'm going to do is to go into the project directory Instead of the project directory, I'll create a file called dependencies.scala. So I'll come over here, the Scala class, this would be an object and I'll call this object dependencies, okay? So dependencies, like so. This file will basically be the file that will contain all the dependencies that I need for the application. The first dependency that I'm going to add is HTTP forest. So HTTP forest is basically like Flask if you're used to Python or Node.js Express.js framework. So it is basically used to build HTTP endpoints. And this is basically the library that I'm going to use to build the endpoint that I'll use in my application. So I'll go over here to stable services and then basically copy this and then add it to the dependencies that I have, all right? So I'll copy the whole of this. The latest stable release for HTTP forest is 0.23.7. So I can actually use this version if I want, which is what I'm going to use. So if I go into my application, I'll change this to 0.23.7, and then I'll create a method called HTTP. So I'll say def HTTP forest, Okay, which will take in a branch, I'll call it, which is of type string. And what this will basically do is that it will return this. Okay, and this will basically be the branch. So I can make this an S and I can add the branch here, like so and I can get rid of the rest because I don't really need it. So let me show you what I'm thinking of doing. So let me import SBT over here to get rid of the red and let me show the type of this method. So what I'm actually thinking of is instead of having all this, I would have, um, I'll pass in a branch, which is basically either DSL, Blaze Server or Blaze Client. So to wrap this up, what I'm going to do is to create some variables. So I'll say val HTTP forest DSL. So HTTP forest DSL will be this HTTP forest like so. And then I'll pass in the DSL as a string like so. Okay. I'll do the same thing for the blaze server and then the blaze client. So now what I'll do is that I'll go into the build.sbt file and then go over here. Then I'll say dependencies dot HTTP forest DSL dependencies dot HTTP forest blaze server and then dependencies dot HTTP four Blaze client like so, and then let me build again. The last dependency that I'm actually going to add to this application is cat's effect. Cat's effect is basically 
used to suspend side effects and we do that using something that we call the IO monad. And we will learn about cut effects as we go through the application. But for now, all I'm going to do is to copy this and add this as a dependency for the application. So I'll go over here, go into build.svt and then do private file cut effects version. I'll paste this here and just only take the this one and then I'll say val cut effect. I'll do this and then I will say cut effect version like so. Okay, and then I'll go into the builders SBT and then I'll say dependencies dot cut effect version. Then I will build again. Okay, so we basically have all the libraries that we need to initially start building the server. And this is what we're going to do in the next tutorial. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.